Hey everyone, NDC here, and I just wanted to do a quick follow-up video from our Icon Composer adding Apple Glass icons to your Xcode projects, as there seemed to be a little bit of confusion of actually having those icons display and appear on iOS as well as on macOS. Now that we're in the Apple Glass era, so iOS 26 and above and Tahoe, Tahoe 26 and above, I think that, that's the macOS one. Uh, we now have access to the Apple Glass icons and Icon Composer. So you can see here, I have some app icons on the simulator and this Receipt.ly one is actually the Apple Glass icon, which stands out a little bit more. So today we're going to, once again, create a Apple Glass icon using Icon Composer and we'll apply the icon file to every platform. So iOS, iPadOS, and macOS. We'll add it to Xcode 26, configure the info.plist, run it on some devices, and verify that it works on the App Store upload with Archive. So to get started, you will need Xcode installed. We're now in version 26 plus. And the great thing is with version 26 plus, it should come bundled with Icon Composer already. So if we go to Xcode, and then developer tools, we can actually see icon composer under the open developer tools tab. This is also where you can find your instrument simulator, reality composers, and even machine learning. We're going to be focusing on icon composer. So now that we're also at a beta, you can separately download icon composer. I'll put this link in the description below as well. If you do want to download it separately, you can just press the download button here and grab the current version of icon composer, but it should be bundled in your Xcode. For whatever reason, if it's not, you can separately download it here. So when you first open up Icon Composer, it's going to ask you to either open a file or create a new document. We're going to be starting off with a new document. I'm not going to be talking too much about the intricacies of the Icon Composer. If you do want to see a video on that, definitely let me know. Otherwise, we're going to make sure we're on the 1024 points, which is the standard size for any app icons. And I'm just going to drag in some PNGs I already have. If you want to drag in some PNGs, take pause this video and take some time to create your own icon, definitely feel free to do so. I'm just going to drag in this background gradient and the sock monkey. And we can see we have our Apple Glass. We can even change the way that it's kind of uh, being affected by the light. Let's say this is my app icon. Looks great in, in dark and default mode. We're going to go ahead and give it a name by clicking on this little chevron here. Because Xcode's going to be looking at this particular file, I'd suggest setting a name and never changing it again. So instead of untitled, I'm going to do monkey icon. Capitalization is important here. I'm going to choose where I want to save it. I'm just going to put it on my desktop so it's easy to grab. And there we go. If you do want to export this file as a PNG, let's say you want to use it for any assets later on, or you want to use it as a old app icon, you want to go to export Make sure that the size is 1024 and the times here is by one. You can also change the angle for the light. You can choose if you want for all iOS or macOS and export. So this is just going to give you that PNG. If you have multiple styles like default, dark, even the mono, you can grab those different styles. This is just our PNG. We're not going to be focusing on the PNG today. Instead, we can go ahead and now close this. We're going to be focusing on the icon. You can see it's on my desktop under the other PNGs and we can verify this is the icon file because if we go to the get info, you'll see that the kind is the icon composer. So it actually has the suffix of dot icon. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and create a new project. For you, you'll probably adding, be adding this to an existing project. I'm just gonna call this one monkey app. Go ahead and create it. We'll be experimenting on both macOS and iOS. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to take that .icon file that we had created, not the PNG, and we're gonna go ahead and drag and drop it into our project navigator. We're not adding it to the assets catalog, just the general app file here. So we're gonna drop it on in. Might take a second to kind of load. Your Xcode might freeze for just a little bit. From there, you'll get this pop-up. And for the action, we want to copy the files to the destination. And for the targets, this app in particular. Cool. And we can even see once it is open, we even get the option to open it with Icon Composer if we really want. So if we do need to make edits or changes down the line, we can change it with the Icon Composer button, which will open that program on up. Now that we have it loaded on in, how do we actually update our app icon? Well, we need to do two things. First, we need to go to our info tab. So click on your app target in the very top. It should kind of have that Xcode hammer and should be the name of your project. 
From there, you want to click on the targets of the monkey app down here, or whatever the name of your project is, and then we'll be going into the info. What I would suggest doing is right clicking on one of these keys, then changing it to raw keys and value. Once you've done that, you'll notice all the key names have changed. We can then press the plus button and we're going to type out CF. And from here, we want to look for the bundle icon file. We're going to select the CF bundle file icon. Then under the value, we're going to be putting the name of the icon. Again, this is why I recommend not changing it because you may change it and then have to change that reference in multiple places. So with the exact same capitalization and spelling, we're going to reference our monkey icon. If you want to double check and make sure you don't mess up the spelling, you can click on the icon, wait a second, and then click again, and you can copy it. Do not copy the dot icon. We just want the name of the file. Let's go back under our icon file here. Let's paste that as the value and make sure you press return afterwards to save your work. So we can see our icon file, which was that CF file there is now monkey icon. Mine's monkey icon. You'll be putting your name there. Then under the general, we're going to scroll down. This might be collapsed, but we want to find the app icons and launch screen for the app icon. We're going to also set it to that name again, not including the dot icon. Make sure you also press return so it saves. For the app icons source, if you want to include all app icon assets, essentially this option tells Xcode to use both the dot icon file and any old PNG assets in your asset catalog. If you're just using the pure new dot icon workflow, leave this off. If you want backwards compatibility, for us, we're running on Mac OS and then eventually iOS 26 plus. So we're all good to go. If you're gonna be running on older OSs that don't have Apple Glass supported, you can also include this PNG file we had exported in the app, in the assets under the app icon, and you'll want this checked. We're just doing the icon today, so I'm going to leave it unchecked. Okay, something I recommend doing is after you've set the app icon in both those places is the command shift K, and that's going to do a clean of your build. Let's go ahead and run it on Mac OS, and then we'll also test it on iOS. I'll zoom in on this in post. Please don't judge my taskbar, but we can actually see that we now have the monkey app icon using the Apple glass. So since we set it up this way, our app icon, is all good to go. If we look in our assets folder, our app icon is currently empty. So we're just using this icon to support our program. Let's go ahead and explore it on iOS real quick. So I'm just going to add iPhone here. This will also work on iPad. Go ahead and run it on the simulator. And we should be good to go because we've already told it about the app icon. It's going to work for both Mac OS, iOS, etc. Okay. We can see once our simulator has loaded, we have the monkey app that is on the screen. I have another Apple glass one right next to it. So as long as you're supporting iOS 26 or above, you will be able to see that Apple glass. If you're someone who's like, oh, I want to support older versions, you can still use that PNG that we had exported here. I just had put it on our desktop. You would just do the old method of going to your asset catalog and setting this as the app icon and then checking include all app icon assets. But we now have this beautiful, whoop, we now have this beautiful Apple glass from our icon composer app icon. One last thing I want to talk about is, is this compatible with the app store? Absolutely. I should have said absolutely. Okay, I'm not that funny. <laughs> I have an example app that I'm developing that's currently just in its beta here. And we can see under the app assets, I do have some custom colors, but the app icon is blank. That's because I'm using the app icon file like I've shown you before. I've already set this up. The deployment is 26 and above, and I've set the app icon to that app to that icon file. So if we were to upload this one to the app store, let's go ahead and go to our product archive might take a few minutes. All right, so I've already pushed through uh, version 1.0. Let's go ahead and push through version 1.1. Again, we don't have that app icon set up the old way through assets. We're just using that dot icon file from icon composer. And we'll see in just a couple of moments, we should be good to go. And there we go. Hopefully this guide gave you some clarity on how you can add your icon file from the icon composer and use that for macOS, iOS, iPadOS, etc.
This way you can fully support that new Apple Glass feel and your app can fit into the ecosystem a little bit better. So I just wanted to do that follow up. I know we had a video on it from the beta, but now that things are live, I wanted to do that update because I had a few comments with some people that had some questions. Hopefully this clears everything up. Always make sure, even though we're running on the simulator today, to test on a real device so you can verify that it works. And iOS 26 and iPad OS 26 automatically are going to render the glass icon using that dot icon file you added. And we also saw it on the Mac as well. You don't need to provide those PNG variants anymore unless you support older OS versions. This is the cleanest icon workflow Apple has ever released. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And we'll see you in the next one. And remember, dream big, code bigger.